A trial is to be carried out in Scottish primary schools to see if computer game consoles can improve the math skills and behaviour of pupils. It follows a pilot at one school where teachers say they found a transformation in children's abilities after using the Nintendo DS brain training software. Well, pupils taking part in the trial seem to think it's a good idea. Well, it's better than just doing normal mask on paper and that, because it's interactive. Everyone from the other class saying, that isn't fair, you're getting to play Nintendos, but we, we were saying, well, it helps you with your maths. Now, have you felt your... Good morning. Primary pupils are to start the day playing computer games consoles in a trial backed by the Scottish Government. Education inspectors want to know if so-called brain training software boosts pupil performance. Some experts are warning that schools should be cautious. Here's Ken MacDonald. Computer games have been in schools for years, but this is the first time the government supported a scientific study of the effects of consoles running brain training games. A pilot project at this school in Dundee produced higher attainment from pupils and better behaviour in class. It's better than maths or like English. Now the government agency Learning and Teaching Scotland, backed by Her Majesty's Inspectors of Education, will be staging trials in 16 schools across the country. But critics are already questioning whether the games are anything more than a quick fix. And you can hear more on the brain training scheme in The Investigation. That's over on BBC Radio Scotland at nine o'clock this morning. Indeed. Now, it's late in the evening. Your children still haven't done their homework. Instead, they're playing computer games again. And no amount of cajoling or threatening is going to work. Well, your battles may soon be over. A primary school in Scotland has carried out a trial of Nintendo's brain training games. And teachers found they helped improve not just math skills, but also children's concentration. Well, let's talk to Derek Robertson from Learning and Teaching Scotland, who is behind the project, and also to David Perks, a physics teacher from South London who has his own views. Very good morning <laughs> to you both. Morning. Good morning. Uh, Derek, a lot of parents will say computer games, they don't help, they hinder a child's learning, but you've had some positive results. Yes, well, at Learning and Teaching Scotland, what we have done is we've, we have an initiative called the Consularium, the Scottish Centre for Games and Learning. And that's what I run. And I've put uh, computer games in nursery, primary and secondary schools throughout Scotland. One of the projects is the Nintendo. We believe that uh, these resources are dynamic, challenging, rich learning environments that teachers can use effectively to help children attain and to switch learners on to learning with resources that have got uh, like cultural value to learners. And the Nintendo project that we did last year was it raised a lot of questions in terms of attainment, but also in the, the, the positive impact in the social uh, fabric within the class and we're putting it in 16 schools throughout Scotland after the Easter break to see if it can have a similar impact on a wider scale. Okay. Well, how positive was it? I mean, how, how did it benefit the pupils? Well, what we did was we did some pre-tests and post-tests uh, at a, a, an age-appropriate maths assessment at level D at the time for what was five, the, our old curriculum. And uh, in terms of the speed of calculation, compared with a, a, a group who weren't using Nintendos, the children dropped by an average of four minutes by, at the end of ten, a 10-week ten intervention period where they only use a Nintendo for 15, 20 minutes first thing in the morning. David, are you happy to hand over your teaching to a computer game? Um, I actually think there's a little bit of a problem in the way that we understand education at the moment and that uh, we're always looking for a trick, an easy answer, um, to get around the hard work sometimes of actually trying to teach people, uh, pupils, uh, mathematics or any other subject. And there's a tendency to see uh, some trick or other, and whether it's a Nintendo or it's a, a, a brain training in other guises or something like that, it sort of takes the em emphasis away from actually education in terms of teaching children. And I'm just very worried that this is where we're going with this. Isn't anything that gets children interested in maths, however they do it, if they're sitting in front of figures working out a mathematical problem, isn't that a good thing? Uh, to some extent, you could say that, but then the perception that people have that maths is boring is more of a problem. And I think uh, the way you get uh, kids turned on to anything is the teacher. And it's the teacher who, if the teacher thinks that teaching maths is a relevant and interesting uh, subject to teach, then that, that's what's going to turn them on. I'm just going to have a quick go at it myself. But, um, Derek, what, is there a benefit in being able to do maths quickly? Isn't understanding better than speed? Well, and with the recall of uh, 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 number bonds and addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, I think it's very important that we can help children develop that skill so they can be as proficient as possible. 
Uh, the game doesn't, doesn't, just doesn't do, this game in particular, just doesn't focus on mental maths. <laughs> Oh, fourth thing seven. <laughs> do you know what? I'm trying to listen to my guest at the same time. And it's quite hard to I do know. the rest. I'm sorry, Derek. I'm That's sorry. Okay. Do carry That's on. Okay. Carry on. See what you get on with that. But there's a number of problem-solving activities in there as well. I would say that good teachers use good resources well in order to get their children attaining and interested in class. And I think we need to look at the changing nature of the client group that's in schools nowadays. They're coming from the digital age. These resources have cultural resonance. There's, there's children out there who school doesn't work for them. They find it's uh, an irrelevance. It's, and so what we need to do is uh, uh, we need to use resources such as these to get kids switched on to think that Which is exactly what David was saying. Yeah, so but that's, that's the problem. I think that if we perceive that school is boring, that's the problem we're dealing with, not the fact that we need a Nintendo, a PlayStation yeah. or something else to deal with it. But David, I'm sorry, Derek, okay. David. Thank you both very much for having time. Thank you very much for coming in. Good Derek, to see you. Derek, I did it in 38 seconds. How does that compare to your year five, sixes? Uh, some of them are doing it in no. 16. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really Feeling good now? Uh, I'll go back to paper and pencil. Thanks very much to you both. You're uh, it is a quarter to seven. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. The main stories this morning.